The wind whispers a tune of the fateful day the schooner Wyoming set sail, never to be seen again. On March 10, 1924, the largest wooden ship in history embarked on a treacherous journey that would end in tragedy. Plagued by strong winds and tumultuous waves, the schooner Wyoming met her fate and sank beneath the churning waves. What happened? How did the largest wooden schooner in history sink? What was the design and construction of Wyoming like? What lessons can we learn from the story? Let's dive in. Wyoming was a six-masted schooner constructed in Bath, Maine in 1909 out of American wood by the shipbuilding company Percy and Small. At 450 feet from jib boom tip to spanker boom tip, Wyoming was the longest wooden vessel ever constructed. The enormous length and wooden construction made her susceptible to bending in rough waves, which in turn caused the ship's long planks to twist and collapse, enabling salt water to seep into the hold. Wyoming used her pumps to maintain the water level in her hold to a minimum, but it was too late. She perished in rough waters in March of 1924, taking the lives of everyone on board. Percy and Small, the shipbuilding company. Percy and Small Ship Construction Company were known for their expertise in designing and constructing ships according to customers' specifications. Compared to its rivals, the company stood out because of its dedication to extraordinary service. Percy and Small Shipbuilding Company had the know-how and experience to construct vessels of all sizes and types, from modest fishing boats to luxurious yachts, to the highest utility and aesthetic appeal standards. Ship repair and maintenance services were offered by Percy and Small Ship Construction Company. The organisation had the resources and skills to keep every ship under its care in tip-top shape, whether that meant doing regular maintenance or more expensive repairs. While very modest in size, the Percy and Small Ship Construction Company operated on a nationwide scale. The firm had established itself as a competent and trustworthy shipbuilding partner for all of its customers. The company's dedication to meticulous planning and national presence made it an excellent resource for anybody that was looking for something different. The Maine Maritime Museum is home to a one-of-a-kind landmark. The Percy and Small Shipyard in the Maine Maritime Museum is the only remaining shipyard site in the United States where big wooden sailing boats were made. Among the enormous schooners built, there is the Six Master Wyoming, the largest wooden vessel ever constructed in the nation. This exhibit begins in the museum's Maritime History Building and progresses through four shipyard buildings, including wharfs, building slips and many other structures. Hundreds of artifacts are available in the museum, which can help to describe the process of wooden shipbuilding in the 1894 and 1920 era, and also to convey the history of the shipyard and the massive four, five and six mast schooners made there. Two or more masts and fore and aft sails are common features of schooners. A sailing vessel. Ships of this sort were originally intended to carry goods, but nowadays they are utilised for racing and pleasure boating instead. The schooner has a rich history that can be traced back to the early 18th century, when the first examples of this kind of ship were built. These ships were built to be quick and manoeuvrable, with the capacity to transport heavy loads over great distances, and the flexibility to operate in shallow seas and other challenging locations. The rigging of the schooner is an important part of its design. A characteristic of this sort of ship is that its front mast is normally shorter than its rear mast. Typically, a schooner will have its sails set fore and aft, allowing it to sail close to the wind and make the most of the force of the breeze. The hull design of the schooner is as well known as its rigging. These boats are distinguished by their long, thin hulls, pointed prows and broad, flat sterns. This layout reduces resistance, which boosts the ship's speed and agility. The schooner has seen a wide range of services throughout the years. Ships like this were originally built for the exclusive purpose of transporting products across the seas, such as spices, tea and textiles. Private yacht owners in the 19th century found the schooner to be a desirable option because of its speed and agility. Schooners are employed mostly for race competitions nowadays. There are several distinct schooner classes and each has its own requirements for things like size, rigging, crew and equipment. The Blue Nose, a Canadian ship built in 1921, is renowned as one of the world's finest schooners. While its primary purpose was fishing, the Blue Nose became known as one of the fastest sailing boats of her day. Soon after, the ship was sold to the government of Nova Scotia, where it served as a symbol of the province's fishing economy. America, a schooner yacht launched in 1851, which also went on to win First America's Cup, is another well-known example. America's Cup is one of the most prominent big races in the history of sailing. It has been contested annually since 1851. The schooner has been around for a long time and remains a popular vessel, although it has evolved in many ways throughout the years. Lightweight composites and computer-aided design software are only two examples of the latest materials and processes that are often seen in today's schooners. Because of these upgrades, the ship is now faster, more efficient and safer, and it can be used by many sailors. 
The schooner is a sailboat type that significantly contributes to maritime history. The schooner has evolved from its original purpose as a cargo ship to become a popular option for leisure sailing and racing, but its iconic standing as a representation of the sea's strength and beauty has not changed. The schooner will catch your imagination and leave you with a profound admiration for this magnificent vessel, whether you are a seasoned sailor or just a lover of maritime history. Wyoming was also an amazing schooner. It was most appreciated for its creative design and modern features at the time. Design and Construction Wyoming was designed by Bant Hansen in collaboration with Miles M. Merry, the master builder for the Atlantic Coastal Commerce under the Percy and Small House flag, with coal as the planned cargo. Wyoming had an overall length of 450 feet, a deck width of 350 feet, and a width between the perpendiculars of 329.5 feet. She had a width of 50 feet 1 inch and a depth of 30 feet 5 inches. Her GRT was 3,730.54 tons, and her interior capacity was 373,054 cubic feet. After deducting the volume of the bridge and crew quarters and other spaces unsuitable for cargo from the gross register tonnage, her cargo capacity was calculated to be 303,621 cubic feet. She weighed 6,004 long tons when fully loaded with her crew and cargo and her fuel, water and supplies, giving her a dead weight tonnage or DWT of 6,004 tons. Its maximum coal load capacity was 6,000 long tons. To raise and drop sails, pull lines and do other jobs, Wyoming was outfitted with a hide anchor, a windlass and a donkey steam engine. The ship could be sailed with just 11 men because of the steam engine, which was not needed to power the vessel. Governor Bright Butler Brooks of Wyoming was one of the ship's financiers, costing $175,000. This is also the reason why she was given the state's name. As a mark of respect, the five-masted schooner Governor Brooks, also built by Percy and Small, retained his name. The Sinking Wyoming, the six-masted freight ship built in 1909, was found on Monomoy Island. Over a century after it sank in a storm off the coast of Chatham, Wyoming was found near Monomoy Island. The six-masted Wyoming, which set sail a long time ago, was comparable in size to modern-day supertankers due to its massive cargo size. Because of the massive dimensions of the sailing ship, iron straps were welded to the hull from the outside. According to John Fish, Vice President of Cortemets American Underwater Search and Survey Limited, even the additional strapping was insufficient to withstand the storm. Wyoming sank to the ocean floor in around 65 feet of water after a violent wind on the night of March 10, 1924. The wreckage was found to be broken in the middle, giving credence to the notion that the ship hit bottom and sunk. Fish said the company's high-tech underwater side-scan sonar and magnetometer were used to locate the wreck for the first and only time. The length of the ship and the presence of the iron strapping allowed the corporation to pinpoint its exact location. Fish said that the company would conduct more investigation and mapping of the wreck in the future. A few miles northeast of Pollock Rip, a region of rough water to the southeast of Monomoy Island, is where Fish estimated the wreck to be located. However, he refused to provide an exact location. There are several shipwrecks in the region, and American Underwater Search and Survey has located a few of them. The firm's confirmation of the site of the steamer Portland, which sank in a violent storm in November 1898 with a depth of between 150 and 200 people on board, is perhaps the largest discovery in recent years. Large metal walking beams which link the steam engine pistons to the paddle wheels on each side of the steamer were discovered in 1989, corroborating the company's claim that they had located the Portland's last resting place. But the corporation kept the Portland site a secret for a long time, as the Portland was inside the Stella Vargan Bank National Marine Sanctuary at a depth of around 400 feet. Last summer, it provided the NOAA with the wreck's precise location. The United States Department of Commerce houses the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or the NOAA, a scientific institution dedicated to better understanding the planet's seas, atmosphere, and climate. Its goal is to provide fast and reliable data that may be used to make educated business decisions and ensure the safety of sailors, residents of coastal areas, and marine ecosystems. In 1970, the United States Weather Bureau, the United States Coast and Geodetic Survey, and the Environmental Science Services Administration were all rolled into one organization to become the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Currently, NOAA is tasked with a wide variety of responsibilities, including but not limited to weather forecasting and natural catastrophe warnings, as well as performing scientific research and collecting data. While its primary mission is scientific research, NOAA is important in informing and serving the public. These include reports on the state of the ocean and the atmosphere, 
as well as any predictions or warnings issued for the weather that might have an impact on public safety or economic activities. For instance, NOAA offers information on storm trajectories and possible consequences to coastal towns to better prepare for hurricanes and other severe weather occurrences. And it also gives information on ocean currents and temperatures to assist fishermen in discovering the best fishing grounds. The conservation and maintenance of marine ecosystems are also one of NOAA's main priorities. This endeavour includes the sustainable management of marine resources, the protection of endangered species and the monitoring of pollution levels. As an example, NOAA maintains a system of marine sanctuaries around the United States in order to safeguard and conserve special marine environments. The organization's efforts to conserve the environment through research public education and service guarantee that future generations may reap the advantages of a thriving Earth just as we have. Just as they have delivered in the past, they are also dedicated to exploring the shipwreck site of the Wyoming schooner thoroughly, which will provide many lessons for the maritime community. There are several important lessons to be learned from the sad events in Wyoming when it went down, including those related to maritime safety, engineering and the social effects of technological progress. The maritime sector must prioritise safety above everything else. The loss of life and property in Wyoming highlights the need for a recommitment to safety in the maritime sector. Crew members had a hard time keeping the ship afloat due to its lack of preparedness for the harsh storms they had to endure. More safety laws, education and modern gear are needed to prevent future tragedies like this one from happening again. Wyoming was one of the biggest and most technologically sophisticated wooden ships ever constructed, and her construction was a true feat of engineering. The ship's five lofty masts and sleek hull were state-of-the-art for their day. Yet, there were potential downsides to this new approach. Being a wooden vessel, it was susceptible to storms and waves, and its bulk made it difficult to navigate narrow channels. The takeaway here is that although innovation and advancement are crucial, they should be pursued cautiously and aware of the dangers that may be incurred. Wyoming was a time-honored vessel built to carry coal from Pennsylvania's mines to New England's docks. Along the East Coast, it played a crucial role in the economy by providing both employment and material support to local communities. The shipwreck highlighted the perils of depending too much on a single form of transportation and the hazards of using cutting-edge technology without proper understanding. It also highlighted the point that we need to think about the unexpected implications of technological progress and take precautions when necessary. Natural catastrophes may be both sudden and catastrophic. The Wyoming sinking was a sad and unexpected natural event. The storm's tremendous gusts and waves which reached heights of 50 feet made it very difficult for the crew to control the ship. In light of this tragedy, it is important to take the necessary precautions against natural disasters every time. The death of so many men was tragic, prompting stricter controls for the fishing and shipping sectors. Realising that such natural disasters may have long-lasting effects on communities and doing what we can to help those impacted is especially crucial in light of this tragedy. The sinking of Wyoming teaches us a great deal about maritime safety, the right mix of innovation and caution, the hazards of cutting-edge technology, the destructive potential of natural catastrophes and the long-lasting effects of tragedy on whole communities. We can build a safer and more resilient world by remembering these lessons and working to avoid future calamities of this kind.